Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. All right, this is the show where we talk about some great new releases that have come out, maybe some not so great occasionally. You know, we do get those, but I try to focus on the stuff that's worth your attention, right? So we got a, a stack of some really good shit here today, so I want to make sure you guys are well aware of these. So the first one, on Metal Blade Records, the second release from this duo, current and ex-Fates Warning members, Jim Matthews, John Arch, Winter Ethereal, hot off the presses. This is some good stuff, folks. All right, so you've got the original vocalist in Fate's Warning, okay, who has been, you know, if you've been following Fate's Warning, he's been fairly quiet on the scene since he left the band in the mid-'80s, right, over the years. Uh, but him and Jim started talking again and, you know, writing music together and recording music together. And this is the second go-round between these two guys, all right, also on board on bass, Steve DiGiorgio, okay, Joey Vera, Sean Malone, Joe DiBiase, George Hideous, on drums, Thomas Lang, Bobby Jazarnbeck, Mark Zonder, Matt Lynch, Bard Kolstak, Frank Oresti on guitars, you know, a lot of current and former Fate's Warning guys, as well as some other notable folks on the metal scene. Uh, a great epic sounding album. I can't stress enough how good these two guys sound together. You know, Jim Matthews is a great guitar player. You know, maybe not the uh, prolific lead guitar player, but he can play leads, play them well, but he is just a creator of fantastic riffs and arrangements. And these tunes are thought provoking, atmospheric, heavy, progressive. And then you got John Arch, who still sings amazing. Amazing, you know. You know, I almost, I was when you know when I was listening to this album when I first got it. I was thinking, you know, how cool it would be for them to kind of do what Halloween has been doing. So Halloween has been touring with like you know their two classic singers, actually three, right? And all, you know, a lot of the current and former members of the band, save for a couple, uh, and they're going out and touring and playing all the great songs. They're they're recorded a new album. How cool would it be if Fate's Warning did that? So you had John Arch and Ray Alder up there singing together, taking turns, you know, on the old and newer stuff. I mean, that, that, is that like not possible? I think that's something they should consider. I would love to see it. So anyway, uh, great tunes. Man, just what do you got on here? Vermilion Moons, Wanderlust, Solitary Man, uh, The Her Tethered, Pitch Black Prism. All the songs are good, top to bottom. It's a very, very strong album. Very strong. I'm probably like on my fourth listen to this, so uh, still digesting it, but man, love it. All right, another new one. Legendary band. New wave of British heavy metal legends, Diamond Head. All right. They released uh, their self-titled album a couple years, two, what, two years ago? Dynamite. And they're following it back up just a few short years later with The Coffin Train. Killer album. Killer album, people. Let me tell you something. Uh, it doesn't get much better than this. Jeff Young, if you're watching, it's got a flying V on the booklet, so you're probably going to have to check this out. <laughs> uh, you know, we got, uh, let me just get the guy's names in the band here. So you've got, you know, Brian Tatler, who is the, uh, you know, original, original guitar player and founder. So he's still in the band. Uh, you got uh, Rasmus Baum Anderson on vocals, and he's been with the band a couple years now. He's the kind of the new guy. He's a phenomenal singer. Uh, Carl Wilcox on drums, Andy Aberley on guitars, and Dean Ashton on bass. Uh, fantastic stuff. Fantastic album. It's heavy. It's melodic. Uh, it's just real professional sound. you got some great tunes on here. Belly of the Beast. Go right here on YouTube. Look up Diamond Head, Belly of the Beast. Check that out. Also, another song I like a lot is uh, Death by Design is great. Uh, the Messenger is kick-ass. The title track, The Coffin Train, is great. Shades of Black, Until We Burn. Uh, it's just all great. Uh, fantastic, fantastic album. I, I love when, like, these veteran bands, you know, all these years later, are still cranking out solid, solid records. Gotta love it. 
All right, let's uh, you know, let's stick on some let's stick on some metal first. I'll get to the prog in a bit. Let's uh, let's stick on. We're gonna go back to nuclear blast. Or no, we weren't on nuclear blast. Went from metal blade to what is the diamond head on? Uh, silver lining music. Now we're going to nuclear blast records. Sweden's Grand Magus, Magus, however they say their name, Wolf God. If you've been following this band for a number of years, as I have, uh, they kind of started out as kind of like a doom, doomy stoner band. You know, more doom than anything else. Uh, they've since, over the last, you know, five, six, seven years, morphed into more of like kind of like an epic metal act. Okay, so if you like like Man of War, Visigoth, that sort of thing, just uh, they still have that kind of doom element to some of their songs, but more importantly, uh, it's just this kind of like you know, classic, melodic, fist pumping, epic sounding classic metal. It's, it's the only other way to do it. Uh, they're a trio, great vocals, killer guitar riffs. You know, their last couple of albums for me have sounded a bit samey. Uh, not that that's a bad thing because they're all been solid albums. All right, um, I I think I'm enjoying this one a little bit more than the last two, which I like. But this one this one's really kind of sticking with me. Of course, it doesn't hurt that it's got a werewolf on the cover, right? Because Pete digs werewolves. So uh, yeah, uh, what do we got? Ten songs on here. One anthem after another. It's heavy. It's melodic. It's it's quite enjoyable. I think you'll dig that. All right, next, the return from the ashes of one of the most groundbreaking acts and one of the first ever death metal bands. I guess, you know, at the time we were calling them thrash, but looking back on it, you know, pretty much they were a death metal act, right? So influential. Uh, possessed Revelations of Oblivion. All right. Also on Nuclear Blast Records. So, you know, basically this is not the Possessed that we remember from way back when, because uh, the only the only member of the band that's still here is uh, Jeff Becerra on vocals. And for those of you who have co who followed the band, uh, he had an accident like a number of years ago where he's pretty much paralyzed from the waist down. So he actually performs and sings with the band in a wheelchair, does a fine job. He still sounds great. I think his vocals have changed a little bit over the years. He, you can totally, you know, he's kind of doing the growling thing, but not, it's more like kind of like a really gruff thrash vocal, but you can understand everything that he's saying, which is great. You've also got uh, Robert Cardenas on bass, uh, Claudius Creamer on guitar, Emilio Marquez on drums, and also on guitar, Daniel Gonzalez. So some of those names you might have heard. Uh, they're also, all of them are pretty prolific on the extreme metal scene. Got guys from Gruesome, a couple other bands. Anyway, the album is quite good. Riffs to die for. I mean, it's just never-ending riff-o-rama. This is, this is what you call a perfect meeting of death metal and thrash. Okay? Uh, I dig this quite a bit. It's as if the guys never left. The sound is a little different, a little more modern. It's a little more polished than, you know, the Seven Churches album, their very, very first album. But uh, quite, quite good. So essentially, this is, what, their third full length. It's taken them all these years to come out with number three. Uh, well worth the wait. Quite good. I'm pretty sure they're out touring, so you can go catch them. But if you like uh, if you like your death metal with a lot of technical riffs and solos and quite thrashy, I think you'll, uh, you'll dig that. All right, now let's go to Prague, right? So... Big Big Train, very popular progressive rock band, right, from uh, from Europe, Great Britain. They put out a lot of albums over the years. This is their latest one. It's called Grand Tour. I dig it. Melodic is all hell. Uh, you know, we, we talked on the question, recent questions and answers show about song lengths, right, and epic song tracks and whatnot. Uh, you know, a handful of the tunes on here go in excess of like 10 minutes long. I think there's probably like four of them on here. But they really work. You know, this band for me, they kind of, one of the reasons why I like them so much is that they kind of mix like kind of like that 70s, you know, mid-late 70s Genesis uh, with some tall, you know, especially like, you know, a lot of flute and really cool keyboards, acoustic and electric guitars. Uh, the vocals kind of have that Gabriel Collins thing going. It's kind of folky. It's kind of proggy, a little bit of hard rock and pop. Just a really, really classy band. And I mean, you know, look at this, look at this release. It comes in like the, you know, it's got like the little book. All right. With the, all sorts of lyrics and paintings and stuff about that. It's just so classy. So classy. Big, big train. Grand tour. I'm sure it's going to be a 
popular album amongst the proggers when it comes to the end of the year, looking at the best releases of the year. I dig it. I, I, it's, it's just, you know, one of those albums you put on, you're just like, oh, you just like, kind of like, it takes you away, so to speak. All right, next, veteran band, legendary band. They were uh, one of the kind of like unsung heroes of the early 70s proto-metal scene, right? Their first album was Dynamite Heavy, all right? And then they kind of did some proggy stuff, some jazz rock stuff, right? Some just plain old heavy rock. They kind of did all sorts of stuff throughout the 70s and then disappeared for many, many years. Well, they got back together a handful of years ago, uh, started performing live again, you know, with a couple of uh, the original members, the guitar player, the drummer, I believe the bass player, and of course the singer. All right. They put out a studio album. Here they are back with the second studio album, okay? Lucifer's Friend, Black Moon. Killer. If you love classic Lucifer's Friend, if you love classic Deep Purple, Uriah Heep, you will absolutely love this, right? So who's in the band? You ask. John Lawton on vocals. All right, John Lawton, ex-Uriah Heep, right? He left these guys in the late 70s to join Uriah Heep for three albums. He replaced, um, uh, I'm drawing a blank, guys. Sorry, I'll get to it in a second. Uh, Peter Heslin on guitar and keyboards, original member. Uh, Dieter Horns on bass and Stefan Eggert on drums. And then you got a couple guests on uh, electric violin, trumpet, synthesizer, so on and so forth. But a really, really good album. David Byron is who I was thinking of. Jeez. You know, I get it. It's some, you know, sometimes when you're like spewing off all these names and trying to remember all this stuff, you just get, at least I do in my older age, I get tongue tied every now and then. I'm kind of like, I know I got it on the edge of my, edge of my tongue. It's a guy whose name I've probably said a million times in my life, but for whatever reason at the moment, I just can't remember it. Right. So anyway, back to the album. Uh, it's pretty rocking. Okay. It's kind of proggy in spots. A lot of great tunes on there. Title track is great. Uh, Roll in the Stone, Kick-Ass, Behind the Smile. What else? Uh, trying to remember which ones I really dug on here. Glory Days is killer. Taking it to the edge. Uh, it's if you like you know heavy Hammond organ blistering guitar and Lawton's rampaging vocals. Lawton is another one of those kind of freaks of nature because he's got to be he's got to be seventy, and he still sings as good as he did you know thirty forty years ago. Killer. Uh, so I am loving this a lot. The return of Lucifer's Friend. If you're one of those people like oh my god Lucifer's Friend, I listened to them forty years ago. Are they still around? Yes, they are. Check out this new album, Black Moon, I'm telling you. All right, last thing we're going to talk about today. Actually, I might talk about one more thing. Uh, this is a band that I met a couple of their members at Nearfest, <clears throat> Northeast Art Rock Festival, back in the early 2000s. I used to run into their drummer, Ted, and a couple other guys. Uh, we'd hang out, we'd talk, you know, whatever. We'd drink some beers, watch all the music. You know, you're there for the whole weekend. You meet all these people. You see all these bands. You get to know people. And, uh, you know, he found out that I, you know, ran a uh, webzine, see Tranquility. So he's like, you know, when we get our demo going, uh, I'd like to send that to you. Maybe you could review it, which he did. And, uh, and then they recorded their debut full length, which they sent us. We reviewed. Loved it. Okay. The band is 13 of everything. Our own sad fate. Okay. But back to my story, so that was, I think, uh, we reviewed their album in 2005, right? And loving it, great, nice throwback to the prog greats of the 70s, but very modern sounding, great vocals, a lot of great instrumentation, you know, the keyboards, all that kind of stuff. Really, really well done. And then that's the last we heard of the band until like a couple months ago. I mean, four, you know, 14 years. And quite frankly, I had forgotten all about them, you know, and I would run into Ted and, and a couple of the guys at the uh, at the near fest for a couple of years. But I stopped going in like 2006. Right. That was the last one I attended. I went to the first seven and we just kind of fell out of touch. And I never, you know, kind of forgot all about 13 of everything. And then, you know, like six months ago or something. Ted reached out to me on Facebook. He goes, hey, what's going on? You know, it's been a long time. We got, uh, you know, you still doing the Sea and Tranquility thing. We, we, we got a new album getting ready to come out. We'd love to send you a copy. So he did. Uh, and this, apparently, they've been working on for many, many years. So it's, it's not like they've been, you know, very quiet and away from music. They've just been, you know, sometimes bands, it's not their full-time gig. So they do a little bit of time, had a lot of changes in members, so on and so forth. So our own sad fate is the result. I like it. It's got, uh, it kicks off with a uh, three part suite called Dark Energy Suite, which is quite good. All right. And then you got uh, Walk on Water, Nine Minutes and Change, Life is Change, Five Minutes and Change, West Texas, 713, and Plague at nine, just over nine minutes. Uh, good symphonic rock, uh, progressive rock. 
A bunch of the guys in the band sing, okay? You got some really nice, tasty guitar work, great keyboards, you know, the synths and the Hammond organ. I heard, quite, I thought I heard little bits of Mellotron here and there. There's a violin on one tune. Really classy stuff, very melodic, memorable tunes. Uh, I dig it. They've still had some, you know, they've had some line of changes since this. Uh, so I'm assuming they have probably right now a more solidified lineup. But um, I'm hoping it's not another 14 years before we hear from them again, because this is really good stuff. And once again, I've enjoyed one of their releases. So 13 of everything, our own sad fate. Look them up on Facebook. Uh, give them a like. Check out some of their music. I think you'll dig it. Really good U.S. progressive rock. All right. The last thing I want to touch on today, because I especially want to give props to, and I forget your name. I'm sorry, Mr. Viewer. But uh, one of our viewers a few months back was really kind of trying to convince me of the virtues of the Marcus King bands, because I guess I was talking about the Allman Brothers or Southern Rock or something like that. And um, so I went and listened to some Marcus King samples, and I heard a couple tunes from this album, probably listened to the wrong ones. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, I wasn't overly taken by it. Uh, but more recently, I had another friend uh, who's been listening to them big time, and especially uh, listening to a lot of, or watching a lot of live clips on YouTube because Marcus King, the leader of the band, a very young uh, guitar player, he's he's incredible, right? And he's put together this kind of almost like big band Southern rock style, but you know, uh, 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 nod to the early Allman Brothers as well as like Government Mule, a lot of soul. You know, you hear a little bit of like Tedeschi Trucks band in their music, uh, blistering guitar work, but just great all-around musicianship. Uh, their new album, this is their most recent album, this is Carolina Confessions, okay? And this uh, actually probably came out last year. Yeah, it came out last year. But um, really good stuff. And I've, I've gone and, and checked out, uh, you know, their prior albums. Just figured I'd throw that out there. I think I already showed these before. But uh, I, if you're someone who really loves, like, a, the Southern Rock, and you're maybe really, you know, upset about the fact that the Allman Brothers are no more. And, uh, you know, maybe you like Government Mule, maybe you like Tedeschi Trucks, but you want something that's got, you know, a little more guitar firepower. Well, Government Mule's got plenty of guitar firepower, but um, Tedeschi Trucks, is, as much as, like, you know, I love Derek Trucks, uh, the last couple albums, I, I want to hear a little more guitar. And I think uh, you get a similar vibe with this band, but it's a, it's a little more rocking, I think, because the, the Tedeschi Truck stuff is a little mellow. I still dig it a lot. But um, anyway, give these guys a shot. The Marcus King Band are really great melodies. He's got a great voice. He's a young kid. He's a killer guitar player. Um, and the band is just really good. A lot of great grooves and melodies, and it's, it's kind of jammy, but it's still it's got like that good R&B flavor to it and a lot of pop melodies, things like that. Really good, kind of summertime feel-good music. Pop it on the car, drive around, and, and really you know get your groove on. And fellas, if you got wives or girlfriends who don't like a lot of the music you listen to, whether you're someone who you know is really into like you know metal or prog, but you like this sort of thing, and you're looking for something to maybe uh, you know turn your lady onto, uh, in hopes that they might actually like something that you picked up. Give this a try. Give the Marcus King Band a try, especially this new album. You know, on the other albums, a lot more guitar playing, uh, a lot more lengthier guitar solos, which I know sometimes the ladies don't like. But uh, if your if your lady likes more compact songs, you know, it's got good musical interplay, but more importantly, a lot of good grooves and melodies. They might dig this. Give this a try. So, I think that's it for today, guys. All right. So obviously some good stuff. So uh, Arch Mathios, Diamond Head. Grand Magus, Possessed, oh, oh evil, uh, <laughs> Big Big Train, Lucifer's Friend, 13 of Everything, and the Marcus King Band. That's it for today. This is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube every damn day. So there's a lot of So for all of you who are constantly saying to me, Pete, we need more new music. We need new music. There you go. There's a whole stack of stuff. A little something for everybody, hopefully, there. All right? If you like metal, you got that. You like hard rock, you got that. You like progressive metal, you got that. Extreme metal, you got that. Prog, uh, classic rock, 70s style, hard rock, prog, you know, whatever. A little bit of everything here. So uh, dig in. Check them out. Go on YouTube. Go buy them. Go stream them. Whatever it is you do, however you get your music, just do it. And I will see you next time. All right? Take care. Full reviews of all this stuff on the website, so go check that out. www.ctranquilly.org. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.